Thank you for having me, and thank you for dragging me into the panel. Um, um, I am, uh, I've actually completely removed my slides and uh, taken my vacation pictures from my trip to Disneyland because I love Disneyland. Uh, and I love to dream about Disneyland. Don't we all uh, love to go to Disneyland and live in the fairy tale world? Uh, going to Disneyland doesn't mean you get to do all the rides in Disneyland. It might, because Disneyland is so big. Uh, but why not go to Disneyland and maybe just do half the rides and enjoy that experience with your kids and your family? Uh, that's, what I, uh, that's what I like to do in the world of addressable TV. So, um, and, and obviously, I can spend 20 minutes uh, having a view on the many very, very interesting uh, uh, topics you talked about in the panel. Uh, and I'll try to uh, maybe address some of them. Uh, but I think one of the things you have to, uh, to think about um, is, um, do you want to have a positive attitude towards the future? Or do you want to have a negative attitude? There's no doubt that we all know that the future is changing. It's looking differently. It will, it will change the dynamic in the whole ecosystem. You might have partners you work with yesterday that you're not going to work with tomorrow, or the partnerships might look different. I think the people who are going to win is going to embrace those partnerships. It's going to think differently. Uh, there are not an awful lot of companies that have the firepower uh, to compete with our friends at Google, Facebook, Amazon, etc. Uh, so I think partnerships is a big, big aim of, uh, of wh where you are going, uh, because it is a very, very complex world. Uh, I am, uh, I'm, uh, I'm very lucky to get to execute globally at a strategy my boss, Irving Gottlieb, really came up with 10 years ago. Uh, he's the chairman of our company, and, um, and he's been working in TV for 30, 40 years. Uh, and he's been thinking about uh, addressability within the TV space for 10, 15 years. And he convinced Martin that it was a good idea in, uh, in a world where WPP is trying to minimize our brand to launch a new brand to, uh, to target and to focus on the future of TV. Uh, you can imagine going into Martin's office and say, we're going to launch a new brand. And he said, we're just not doing the opposite. So what are you talking about? Uh, and him allowing us to do that is because we think that everyone in here working in the broadcast industry, every advertiser is here focusing on broadcasting. It is an enormously exciting world. And it's potentially going to be more exciting than it was yesterday. So that's, we are, we're seeing this as being very, very, very interesting. So that's, that's how we started. We started the company to, with the aim of building a global ecosystem. And a global ecosystem means that we can't do this by ourselves. There are so many components of it. We work with great content partners all over the world. We work with great distributors um, all over the world. And we work with a demand partner. Uh, our current demand partner is Group M uh, within WPP. So that's how we see the ecosystem. It looks one way today. We're trying to be really, really good at what we're doing. Uh, and it will probably look differently in two, three years uh, because the world is moving fairly quickly. Um, so that's kind of the, the principle of, of what we're doing and why we're doing it. Why we're doing it, I'll, I'll speed through the next two slides, and I have a super hard stop uh, uh, in 12 minutes, I just noticed. Uh, um, the world is changing. The way we watch TV, uh, you all know that. Ten years ago, we were sitting in the living room. We were watching this fantastic content program. We were delayed half an hour. We would miss, miss uh, 30 minutes of that program. Today, we have so many choices. We have great, great content, not just from traditional broadcasters, but from, from, from other big companies that are investing heavily. We have opportunities to watch it in many different ways. Uh, uh, we have different devices. Uh, we, have, we have different platforms. And all these different parties are part of the future of TV. And it's very, very exciting. But it's also very, very complex. Uh, and I think. And I think as a TV viewer, that's where it's, it all starts. It starts with how people are changing their viewing habits. Because remember, advertisers want to get hold of that audience and sell their product and services to that audience. And if you realize where the audience is and how they behave and what they do, you are much, much closer to actually sell your product and services to them. So that's kind of the underlying foundation that we sometimes forget that, uh, that 
advertisers need to have fulfilled their targets and goals. Um, and I'm not saying agencies know exactly how to do this, but obviously we are very, very close to the advertisers. Um, I, I, I read that TV is dying. I read that that we are all doomed day and it's, it's all a bad place. TV is enormously exciting right now. Uh, TV is changing. Yeah, linear TV is declining. Uh, we, uh, we, we all know the facts. So I'm not going into, into the details of it. But for us, the whole on-demand world, that's TV as well. Uh, as long as you watch it on the big screen, uh, and I'm not even talking about mobile, how you watch TV, I just focus on the big screen. It's growing. It's very interesting. Some markets even see growth when you define TV that way. So, so TV, TV has fantastic times ahead of it. Um, it but it has big, this change has massive implications for advertisers. Uh, it has implications that, uh, and this is purely UK numbers, according to Barb, a third of uh, all uh, commercial impacts are not measured. Uh, if you look at, uh, at a 16 to 34 year olds, commercial impacts, not viewing, commercial impacts are down by 13.8%. If you're an advertiser and your, your target is 13 to, uh, to uh, 16 to 34 year old, you have a problem. It's not one or two percent. You have a problem where you're going to spend the money. You need to spend it in different ways. So you simply can't spend it there. So, so just forget advertising, uh, addressable advertising for a second and, and define audiences just from a reach perspective, which is one of the really, really strong things Linear is very, very, very good at. That's difficult. So you have to recognize that and you have to open the door to the whole on-demand world and invest in great consumer, consumer proposition that generates fantastic inventory, et cetera. If you do that, that's where they're going. They want to watch all these things, so that's very exciting. I know many of you are doing that. Uh, but of course, it creates an awful lot of complexity in the market, but it also creates a lot of excitement. We need to think differently. We need to start using our, our advertisers' uh, first-party data. In the TV world, that's not something that necessarily uh, is something that's done a lot. Um, we, can, we can start doing different uh, creative uh, tailoring to where we are uh, because everything is more powered by technology. We can start uh, uh, planning TV ads uh, much later than we used to do. So in, in the UK, a typical TV ad is planned two months ahead. We can start now doing it weeks ahead. So just that mindset is all of a sudden you can start moving budgets into TV that are not planned two months ahead, that's planned two weeks ahead or two days ahead. That opens opportunities for you to move money into that. Just practicalities that, like that, where we sometimes forget, that's, that's the opportunities we create. Um, real-time optimization or near real-time optimization, uh, a different way of measuring it. We, we shouldn't make the lack of standardization across all these different applications and devices slow us down. But it is very important to be able to measure what we're doing because it is relative fair when an advertiser say, I love this world, but I don't know how to measure it. And I, it's difficult for me just to spend money in a place I can't measure. And right now, now in the UK, Barb is gold standard. I'm not saying Barb is perfect, but it's gold standard. So if we really want to accelerate aggressively the spend in this space, we have to figure out the whole measurement, which is complex. Um, so so that's, that's some of the exciting aspects. Let me run quickly through some of, uh, of our aspiration and why, why we were allowed to launch this brand here in the UK and we'll do it in other markets. Uh, we want one single point uh, to the world of addressable TV. That's our job. We are planning on behalf of our clients. Uh, if we have to work with, with 20 different systems in a market, uh, we have to start charging our clients uh, not even double the fees, but triple the fees. And um, we have not been super good at that so far. Uh, procurement is not uh, enormously excited when we say the, tri the fees are going to be tripled. Uh, because if you have to integrate into 20 platforms, surely that will take much more time and energy to do that. So one single point of contact, uh, we're not letting the agencies build their own solutions, we're building one solution. 
Uh, we are all about uh, the right data. We get data from uh, broadcasters we work with. We get uh, data from Kantar, a company we own ourselves, from M Platform. We buy experience data. Uh, so there's an awful lot of data out in the market that's really, really interesting and relevant. We think that broadcasters have a fantastic opportunity. It is brand safe. It is not fake news. It is a trusted medium that is enormously regulated versus the digital world. I don't need to give you an example of what's happening right now, right? We all read the news and what's been happening nonstop. Uh, we are being helped a lot by that. Uh, can, if we can manage reach and frequency holistically across all the different solutions, that's very, very important. And then supply, uh, supply is kind of, that's kind of the, the four areas we're focusing on to create one point of contact for our, for our clients. Um, we work today in the UK. It's taking us three, four years to get to where we are today. Uh, we work with Sky, Virgin, UView, uh, connected devices, smart TVs. Uh, one of the panels said, um, said that the, the hardware producers like Samsung, LG, uh, won't necessarily get it right and they don't care about their consumers. Uh, I think that's very, very wrong. Samsung is a gigantic company uh, that makes a lot of money. They're very, 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 very focused on the user experience. And they're building sales advertising teams all over the world. Uh, and, and just remember, Samsung is at the size of Apple. Uh, that's how big they are, and they're very, very smart people. We also integrate into Xbox. We have the pleasure of serving ads with all these wonderful content providers. Four, five, ITV, Sky, uh, et cetera, and then many other content providers. We, we didn't do this in two months. It took us three, four years to really get into this. But we are helping our advertisers reach that audience that is moving from linear into the on-demand world. Um, uh, none of this is perfect. None of these are perfect integrations, but we are doing things. We don't think we should think everything needs to be 100% perfect. I have a lot of these conversations with broadcasters wherever it is, all over the world, that are saying we have to get the right solution. I actually think you don't focus on necessarily getting the right solution right, but you get a solution in there and you drive that and you go out and you learn, you're out and trying things and learning things you don't learn by sitting in a, in a room strategizing, doing nothing. So I think that's a big, big message for me uh, to, uh, to what we see. Uh, we didn't start in 16 when we really launched this. We didn't start with a perfect product. Uh, but then over time, because we're moving more and more spend into this area, uh, we, we have a, a very, very powerful product in the market uh, as of this year, with, uh, with, as I've described it, with, with very, very strong integrations. And it's partnerships. Uh, we're moving more and more spend into this space, and, uh, and we think that's right. We think that's right for our advertisers. Uh, so why are they, why are they so, uh, so excited? Well. As I said, going out and reaching uh, the different uh, complexity in this exciting environment, uh, that's very interesting. It's, uh, it's viewable. Uh, we don't pay for ads that are skipped. Uh, it's high quality. It's brand safe. It has completion rates of 96%. Uh, that is very, very powerful. So the more supply broadcasters put into this whole ecosystem, the more advertisers will move their money. Because remember, money follow eyeballs, and eyeballs are moving away from traditional linear. I'm not saying traditional linear is not important. It is massively important. And it will remain, remain very, very important in the next five, 10 years. But it probably won't grow. That's OK, because it just looks differently. Uh, and just remember, in the 50s, uh, when radio consumption was bigger than TV consumption, it took four and a half years for TV, when TV became bigger consumption-wise. It took four and a half years for advertising to become bigger than radio advertising. So there's always a delayed impact because of all the things the panel talked about today. Um, and then finally, be, be, uh, you probably are. I would be even more mocal of what you're doing with the fantastic content, the many, many, many dollars, pounds uh, you spend in investing in, uh, in content because that is where advertisers want. Uh, yes, it's very easy to go with, with the big American uh, companies because they make, make it very easy to spend money there, but advertisers want to go in there. So let me give you three quotes from, uh, from some, of, uh, some of the agency heads uh, that, are, that are working with our, the, our clients and their clients to spend with us. 
uh, first mindshare said why the ability to layer granular audience targeting with premium broadcast inventory in a brand safe and viewable TV environment makes it very, very appealing. Right? This is, that's, that's what we're talking to advertisers about. One thing that, that is relatively new, which is very, very interesting, is Rachel saying more and more of the clients that works with us are moving back into TV because it's a trusted environment, but they're moving back into the opportunities where you can start target audiences like the opportunity with Finecast. Um, and, and at Smart and Virgin uh, Solutions, et cetera. So that is, that is a new trend we are seeing uh, because people are getting more and more worried about uh, the impact uh, all the different things have in the industry right now. And then the new thing is um, uh, new clients. If, if you are a smaller client that's never done TV before and, uh, and all of a sudden you have the opportunity to uh, target households in the greater Manchester area, all of a sudden you can start doing TV. You haven't been able to do that in the past. So, so when you think about all these different aspects, we are in a very, 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 very interesting uh, time. And uh, uh, I did promise a, a few minutes to question and answer. I would say the, the thing that, that really struck me is um, a, a big excitement to be in this industry. If you don't like chains, if you love to work on things that you've done the last 20 years and you hate chains, <coughs> not so good times. If you want something that is changing, if you like what your core business is about, and if you want to take your core business and you want to change it and put it into the future, you all have some of the most interesting jobs in the industry, in my view. So uh, congratulations on that. Um, I believe we have time for just one or two questions before Jacob has to run off. Yes. Um, can we get a microphone to this chap here? Yes, uh, use your um, voice and sure. And can you please introduce yourself and say um, where you're from? My name is uh, Michel from Screenforce. I'm from Huizen in the Netherlands. Um, you're part of the WPP family, I understand. Yes. Where do you stand uh, compared to Modi, uh, one of the other members of your uh, WPP family? Because Modi I don't. A good question. Modi started um, uh, four, really five years ago, uh, and uh, this new world of addressable TV, uh, we don't know exactly where it's going. So we have all kind of different initiatives all over the world. Modi is one of them. We also have another initiative called One to One in the U.S. Uh, so we are we are we're trying to let people get on with it and do things so we can learn. Uh, from what they're doing. So a lot of the things we're doing in Finecast, we learn from Modi. Uh, um, um, this is not an announcement, but uh, 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 we're in a world where we want fewer brands. The message is clear. Um, do we have one more question? Um, um, no? Okay, I have a question for you, Jacob. Um, I thought at, you would. At, the moment, how do broadcasters view you at the moment? Do they view you as an opportunity or do they view you as a threat? And how are you changing that opinion? I think every, everything new, you always is a little bit cautious of. I think that's part of the DNA of uh, human mankind. Uh, so, and we are new. Uh, we launched last year. Uh, we worked on it for three, four years. Um, we are with, uh, with three of the big broadcasters in the UK. We are spending more money with them than we've ever done in a declining TV market. Yeah. So let me just say that again. With top three broadcasters in the UK, we are spending more money with them than we've ever done before in a declining TV market. Uh, we're doing that because we are building fantastic product for our advertisers to engage with, and therefore they spend more money in these areas, which goes to broadcasters. Um, and that's, that's, that's how it's done. Yeah. So that's how we do it. So we are, we are, we are, we are, we have a lot of change to do within the agencies, and we have a lot of education uh, with our group, and we have a lot of education with our advertisers. Uh, because imagine you're an advertiser, you've been doing TV for 20 years, and then you get these uh, products uh, wherever they come from. Uh, uh, there's not one single advertiser that wouldn't say this is exciting. It is very, very exciting. 
But then you go home to your desk and you say, mm, how do I fit it into what I've done? All my measurement systems, all my models, and all that stuff. And that's where we try to help as much as we can. Mm -hmm. And the more we help, the more money goes into this space because advertisers love it. Yep. So it's just that simple. Brilliant. Well, um, thank you very much. Round of applause, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.